Welcome to Daily Watch Talks number 106. 106, that's pretty good, huh? We're together again, Christian. Yeah. Um, last week, I think it was the last podcast, we again discussed waiting lists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's basically an element of our hobby, our world, yeah, as it is. is. You can't discuss popular watches these days without waiting lists, without two, three times retail price without investment value, going up in value, which is fair enough. It's parts, it's it's an element of what we do. Um, at the same time, I remember like you that uh, there was a time when it was about how much discount did you get at yes. the retailer. Yeah. That you and you would go shop with the with the name retailer because they gave you a ten or fifty percent off. Yeah. No matter the watch. That was also for Rolex, also for Patek. It's it's inimaginable right now. Yeah, because totally. They, they will laugh at you if you come up with how much can you get me. But in, I, in in 2015, I was in Hong Kong. Uh, this is December 2015, and I went to one of the Rolex retailers there. No, sorry, one of the Patek retailers there, and they actually had the Nautilus Blue Dial Chronograph in the window, which is pretty rare. Yeah. Uh, but you know, still okay. I went in there and I asked if they had a 5711. It goes like, no, sir, but we will get one tomorrow. But I can only offer you a 10% discount on this this model. Jeez. This is six <laughs> years ago. Six years six ago. Six years ago. Yeah. The world was completely different. It was not a matter of if I could get that product. It was what's, how much discount did you get on this watch? Yeah. But you know us. We're always looking for opportunities and we're always looking to, 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 see, uh, yeah, to see alternatives because... Right now, one could imagine that uh, if you look at it from the outside, that the whole watch industry, every watch is awaiting this and every watch is double, triple retail. But of course, that's not true. So what I would yeah. like to do is to look into uh, five alternatives from big brands yeah. and all watches that, that were launched, let's say, in the past six, seven years mm -hmm. or younger. And that uh, are good value. And that can be had, actually, first of all, they're probably available if you go to the retailer. And secondly, you might even get it below retail if you're smart and if you do your homework. Um, just to see, yeah, to, to see where we are. And first, I would like to drop, Christian, um, I know you like to watch the, the CQ from Glashütte. Oh, I love it. I love it. I, when we saw the initial sketches, we were actually visiting Glashütte. Uh, I didn't believe in that watch at all. I, I thought that was a ridiculous launch. I couldn't see anything cool about this watch. And then I saw it during the uh, Times of Moving or something like that. Uh, that was that uh, Swatch Group uh, watch fair. Um, oh, yeah. And I had it on my wrist for the first time, and I, I had to change my mind completely. It is a gorgeous watch. It's a perfect size. Uh, there was a limited version. Um, and one of our good friends of the show, actually, uh, Brian Lüge, uh, he was one of the very first to buy one. And I think only one came to Denmark. And that's still one of his favorite watches. And I, every time he's wearing it, I'm like, dude. And it's still one of the very gorgeous. few in Denmark, probably. And mind you, on the cover of my most recent book is the CQ. So yeah, yes. I'll give you that. Yep. that. And that was a beautiful picture. Yep. But we love Glashütte. Glashütte Original is, is, a, is a brand in itself that's, that's quite underestimated because they're a bit below the radar. But if you look at the quality yeah. of what they do, it's it's gorgeous. And the CQ, I think we'll, we will we will paste it in this uh, this episode, is uh, a diver's watch. Yeah. It's uh, 9,000 US dollars retail. I checked mm -hmm. the, the dollar prices sure, on, sure. on a strap and a bit above 10 uh, with a bracelet. Mm. And then it comes uh, in, uh, in Rolex territory. Let's put it like that. That's Absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but it's a great alternative to the Submariner, I think. Yeah. I mean, even though the Submariner is really hard to get, everybody has it. <laughs> because the production the production numbers of, of Rolex are so high, uh, a Rolex Submariner is not at all a rare watch. Uh, I think the Glashütte Original CQ, uh, the one that's originally uh, designed from the very first Divers watch from Glashütte, 1969. From 1969. Yeah. Um, I think check it out. It yeah, is, it's, it is. It's, it's, it's definitely an exotic choice if you are normally into Rolex, but it's, it's a great watch. I love it. I really like it. Okay, second one. Um, the Chopin Alpine Eagle 41. Let's focus love it. on that one. Absolutely that, that love one. it. Yeah. Love it. Love it. I mean, the, the Austrian uh, steel alloy is a bright, 
Uh, it's a very solid uh, alloy. It's it's more solid than normal steel, so it won't scratch as easy. I think the dials on the Alpine Eco, uh, the the full collection is just gorgeous. Forty one millimeters. It would have been cool if it was forty, but forty one still fits well because the bezel is actually pretty wide. It is. It so is, it's, the it's, dial looks as if it was forty. It's a comfortable watch on the wrist, and 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 um, they actually for me reinstated the the, the likeliness the, the attractiveness of uh, a duotone watch oh they launched gorgeous. the steel gold and it's gorgeous i really would have a hard time deciding which one to choose i on think the Alpine Eagle. i think the 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 um, the steel rose gold version with a gray dial is a stunning watch you can't take a bad picture of that watch because it's just all over fantastic. But the steel version, if you buy it on the secondary market, you could save yourself a cool $1,800. Yeah, so that's for, um, of course, that, that's not a Rolex. I would compare to the more steel-oriented sports watches. Yeah. yeah. And then, then the, the, the Royal Oak comes to mind, but that's a different that's price. a whole different game. Even if you can get it on uh, for retail. Yeah. But then again, in itself, if you have to spend twelve thousand euros something like that this is a daily beater that that really does it so yeah, it does go check it out <laughs> third one is the piaget polo s yeah a classic yeah it has become a classic yeah you know yeah. people hated it when it came out i think what saved it for me was the skeleton version which is just a gorgeous gorgeous piece um i think the the development and and the evolution of the polo s has put its mark on the uh, in the watch industry. It, it's it's on the market. Uh, it has fans. I, I I see it on more and more wrists. So definitely, I remember I was actually offered the watch when it was introduced, and they offered me a discount of two thousand dollars, which was pretty good. A skeleton or the no 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 no, no, no the, the normal one when it was introduced. Okay. I think it was in seventeen. Yeah, a few years ago. Yeah, I think it's both in uh, time only and in uh, uh, chronograph. The chronograph uh, with the blue rubber strap is a gorgeous piece. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that is, if you check it out, I think it's it's available and uh, also at a very good price. Absolutely, go to a retailer. They have it right there. Maybe not the chronograph because that that, that was somewhat popular, but the time only, especially the one with the green strap and the green dial, gorgeous piece. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number four on the list. I have to check the Bulgari Octo Finissimo. Yeah. Sorry about the police. Yeah, there's something going Sorry on. Sorry about that. Um, the Octo Finissimo is, is actually a watch that uh, has gained quite a reputation. Yeah. Also from a design perspective. Yeah. I recall that some people said, okay, this is really a classic, an icon in the making. People are all constantly looking, what is the next Nautilus? What is the next Royal Oak? Well, it's not coming because no. those were yeah. icons that, that, that gained that reputation over tens of years. Yeah, uh, but I have to say that the Octo Finissimo has a unique touch because it's not copying anything. No, well, I I think the one of the trends when Baobang he uh, he took the helm at Bulgari was the super slimness. Yeah. That was before that. That was owned by Piaget. Yeah, with the Altiplanos yeah, and sure, sure. the ultra slim uh, watches. The Octo Finissimo is no matter the complication. No matter Tourbillon, no matter Chronograph, no matter Perpetual Calendar, it's an ultra slim watch. Yeah, it's absolutely stunning, and it's gentle on the wrist. It's so elegant, and I don't know if you can get every single model. You probably can't, uh, because you know production is sure, not sure. crazy not high to, either. Yeah, uh, but you can definitely get it with a discount, and it's a, it's a gorgeous piece. If you haven't tried out the Bulgari uh, Octo Finissimo yet, you should. No matter the model, they are absolutely stunning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And number five, we're doing five watches that are available for you uh, without a waiting list, without yeah. paying huge premiums uh, uh, above retail. Yeah. The fifth one, the Girard Perigo Laureato in uh, in a recent edition, the Absolute or the the Infinity, even. But that's no, 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 no. That that that's a hundred pieces only for Vimpe. exactly exactly. So. I'm not quite sure if that was sold with uh, with a discount. I know a Danish friend asked me uh, for the piece, and he spent quite some time yeah. locating one. So I wouldn't necessarily think that they are offered with a discount. But the Laureato line definitely is offered with a discount. I it's did a I did a little piece. checking on uh, on um, 
Corner 24. Mm -hmm. And the model I saw the most was the, was the Absolute, which is the darkish, uh, the dark black case. And then they it has the, this um, red lining or blue lining, both in chronograph and in time only. Okay. I I'm think not quite sure which one it is. It is about uh, 14, 12, 14,000 uh, euro dollar as, okay. as, as retail. Okay. And these are widely available, at least sure, it sure, seems. Sure. And, and uh, again, yeah, we, we I think um, Christian and I, we both love Shira Perigo. We do. For the past, but also for the present, because they have some beautiful watches. Yeah. But to some, for some reason, there's never a breakthrough. If you know what I mean, it's yeah. I, I, they are stuck somewhere. I think Shira Perigo has had the privilege of being a fantastic movement provider and and manufacturer yeah. for many years. Yeah. And I believe at some point they actually sold five thousand of their movements to, for instance, Marc Busson and friends, uh, which of course they don't use all five thousand. Uh, but uh, actually, some of the independent watch brands they use GP watch uh, movements. Yeah. So. They had a, a really pleasant income. That's a healthy watch. business. That's a super healthy yeah. business. Yeah. So they are right now in the dilemma uh, like Zenith. It's really tough for them to come out and say, oh, we do watches as well. And then they come up with the Laureato and go like, oh, you know, it's a Royal Oak uh, copy. Hey, dude, the Laureato is 1975. Yeah. So it's before the Nautilus and just after the, the, the Royal Oak. But the Laureato is a gorgeous line from gp but they need aggression they need to be far more aggressive in the communication and it's like oh you know it's chill it's it's a chill watch brand yeah it's chill they're great people and uh, again the watches speak for itself i think a, a bit more confidence maybe in that they're really good at what they're doing <coughs> that that is uh, but it's like they, they, they feel like oh we don't have to tell the people that they know that uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people don't know that I think the people who buy Girard Perigo, they know. But that's also the reason why the people who are not buying it, I they think, have to be convinced. I think uh, uh, a gentleman or a gentlewoman buying a uh, Laureato uh, instead of a, a Royal Oak is, is a very interesting person. I'd like to uh, have a chat with them, have a coffee with them. And uh, I, I met uh, John, Gold, uh, John uh, Goldberger during, um, uh, during uh, Geneva Watch, Watch Days, Days yeah. and he was wearing a Laureato in titanium three bridge i mean the the three bridges were made in sapphire in street bridge uh, uh tourbillon and it was uh, number zero on the back and with uh with a uh, with an engraved note from the former owner the the italian race car driver what was his name maca the former uh, gp uh, there are many from italy no, 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 no. The 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 guy who uh, who uh, owned uh, Shira Perigo. Oh, Macaluso. Macaluso, yeah. yeah Macaluso, yeah. he had engraved on the back of Goldberger's watch, and he bought it at an auction uh, because the owner of Chrono Passion, at some point, he sold out of his personal collection. Yeah, I heard that. And yeah. that Laureato in titanium, three bridge to Beyond, sapphire bridges is now on the wrist of John Goldberg. And that is a cool ass watch. Talking of a conversation piece. That is and that's that's, a, that's the coolest piece in the world. That's the coolest Laureato. Of course and the coolest cat in the industry as well. Yeah. So that's that's also I think if you look into these alternatives, and we now mentioned five, it's mm. that's another a good story. It is a conversation piece. Of course, many people will recognize the the, the submariner on your wrist or the royal of course, oak. Of course. And uh, less people will see that it's a Polo S or a CQ. Yeah. But it gives you confidence that people who do see it, mm. you most likely will have a, a nice conversation with them. Because Absolutely. that that is what it's all about. It yeah. is because you show that you have uh, done your homework and that you have a passion for horology. So, uh, but if we just stick to a GP now, because I'm yeah, just yeah, 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 I'm yeah. just running through uh, one of my most recent searches on Chrono Twenty Four. By the way, we are not at all associated to Chrono Twenty Four at all, but we do use uh, that a lot of, as references. Sure, it's a market. But uh, if you look uh, at the Laureatos, the chronographs, and the perpetual calendars, we're talking four thousand euros. This is crazy. I mean, you can get split seconds, uh, the Rasa Panza. Um, you can get a, a, a full register chronograph from the Laureato line uh, from the early 2000s at no money, three to 4,000 euros. 
That is just amazing. I have an idea. Yeah. What if we spend some of our time in the coming podcasts, in the coming months, to explore the unpopular watches? Yeah. And to discuss, to to analyze what what happened. It's the same. We we have discussed that many times this week about the IWC Da Vinci, which was great. Yeah, it was. In the nineties. Yeah, it was. It was a super popular watch. Yeah, it was. The story was great. IWC was on the move. It was the, the engineer's brand. They did beautiful pieces. Yeah. And now nobody talks about the Da Vinci. No, but I think the problem is that right now, <laughs> right now, uh, IWC is all about the pilots. So actually, right now, uh, in terms of, of uh, interest in collections, are going back to the 1990s. Because back then, uh, the chronographs, the yeah, pilots, so uh, the double chrono, etc. That was the thing. And then Cannes came in in 2002 and, and completely changed the brand when Richemont uh, bought IWC Schüssel Kulsan Lange. They bought yep. them in 2000. So when George Cannes came in, you know, there was a lot of money from the group uh, to invest into uh, completely turning the, the company around into a huge success, which it enjoys now. But I, I think when you talk about these brands that, that needs they need attention and rightfully so when i was in advertising many many years ago i was also part of a group it was it was called uh, tbwa so we had all these international branches at some point my copyright and i we were we were asked if we wanted to uh, to work with what they called challenger brands so basically we would go to the different branches around europe and we would ask the the the, the certain um, uh, agency what is your Biggest client's most challenging uh, uh, brand. Yeah. So we would do these. Uh, we would turn around in Europe, and we would we would make the least attractive objects very sexy again. Let's, and I think that that's exactly what we can do right let's now. Let's do that. Let's talk about nineties split second GPS. Let's talk about nineties IWC perpetual calendars that are available for. Let's say below 10,000. Okay, I'm just going to throw this out right now. Yeah. The IWC GST split minute. Ooh. Yeah. That's 4,000 euros for a rare complication. We all know the Ratterpound, which was actually invented uh, for a wristwatch by Harpring while he was working for IWC. For IWC, yeah. But uh, Stefan Enen, one of his first patents when he started at, at IWC was the split minute GST. It's a large watch. It's around 43, 44. But it's, again, it's a diver's watch. Yeah. Go check it out. See the prices. Don't tell me you don't want that watch. That is an amazing, crazy cool complication. I love it. Yeah. I'm on the hunt. And please, it's it's great that you're listening, but don't tell anyone about this. No. Because these are secrets. Yes. And let's keep it for us. Otherwise, yeah. they, they run into, but that's the, the so challenge we have. So we talked about the Laureatus and our love for that. Go check it out. Tell us if you're buying one or what you are hunting down as a not so loved timepiece, if you like. Yeah. Did you buy something unusual? We would love to hear from you because I think the time is now. This Let's not talk about the Daytonas, the Nautilus, the Royal Oaks, the usual suspects and all that. Let's talk about the other amazing watches on the market that can be yours for a steal. Exactly. That's it. I have nothing to add. I have this nothing to add. Beautiful this journey. Is, I'm, I'm, I'm full of, uh, you know, I want to, I want to read all the cool suggestions yet that you have. I don't care if it's a, uh, if it's a uh, Seiko uh, designed by Gigiaro, uh and used in the Alien movies. I, I don't care what it is. Just tell me something really cool, a cool timepiece that everybody forgot about. How much you paid for it and how much you love it. Exactly. That's it. Thank you for tuning in. Have a great day. Bye.